We worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We give you the glory we worship you our lord for you are worthy to be praised you are our father and Omega, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We give you Glory, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We give you Glory, we worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. And who is like you, God, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless words. For nothing in this world can satisfy. Lord Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, your presence is heaven to me oh lord your presence is heaven to me treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Oh, Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Lord, your presence is heaven to us. Oh, Jesus, Lord, your presence is heaven 
to us. So all our days on earth, we will await. The moment that we see you face to face. Lord, for nothing in this world can satisfy us, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, Lord Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Lord, your presence is heaven to us. Oh, Jesus, Lord, your presence is heaven to us. Oh, Lord, your presence is heaven to us, oh Jesus, Lord, your presence is heaven to us. And so, Father, we ask for your presence tonight. We thank you that you are with us. Speak to our hearts. Commit our spirits and our hearts to you, Lord. Take over and help us receive your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My dear sister, God richly bless you. Thank you. So, sisters, good evening once again. We thank God so much for this time in his presence. He's good and he's faithful. And any time that we gather in his presence, we don't leave the same. We don't leave the same. In fact, if you sit back and you look, you just ponder over your life, over the past five years, you realize that who you were five years ago is not who you are today. Who you were two years ago, that's not who you are today. The Lord is transforming us. The Lord is working on us. And we give him praise. We give him glory. Okay, as I pray briefly, I want each of us to also be in a mode of prayer. Talk to your father and ask him to have his way with you tonight, to speak to your spirit, to feed you with bread of life, to give you living water, you know, to quench your soul, to minister to you. Tonight, we are asking him to teach us what he wants us to know when it comes to listening. There's so many communication challenges in homes, in families, in friendships, sometimes even in fellowships, in ministries. But may the Lord give us the secrets of his covenant. He reveals it to them that fear him. He teaches them, he liberates them. He causes them to be free, to have a different kind of fellowship and relationship with him and with one another. Tonight, I believe he will do the same for us. And our marriages will not be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We have gathered here because of you. In fact, every time when we come together like this, your word says the gathering of the saints is unto you. It's because of you we gather. We are asking you to teach us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant unto us conviction. Conviction that leads to transformation. Renew our minds. Soften our hearts, have your way in us. Plant your word in our hearts. Let it be seed in fertile soil that bear fruit in season. Teach us what you want us to know when it comes to listening. We give you praise, we give you glory, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so sisters, tonight the topic that I've chosen is lessons in listening lessons in listening and i trust that the lord is going to have his way with us he's going to teach us and i believe that we shall all be liberated in the name of jesus all right so 
on Saturday, we had a session with Uncle Adam, and it was in the area of temperaments, right? Temperaments. And we, we learned that at the end of the day, we have to be spirit controlled. We have to be Christ-like, okay? We are not going to rely on our old nature and our old ways. We are going to put on Christ. Very important. Now, based on the lesson that we learned on Saturday, I thought, why don't we do a session today that still links, it, it, it will start from, it will kind of have a connection with our natural man, our natural way, that is our temperament, and then zoom us into an understanding of what is expected of us when we, when, when we walk as children of God, we walk in Christ-likeness. When it comes to marriages, I have found out that over the years, a lot, a lot of married couples are frustrated. I've seen husbands who are extremely frustrated and keep saying, my wife doesn't listen to me. That was actually the case in my own marriage. And I have seen wives who are very frustrated and seek counseling and say that the husband does not listen to her. All right. Now, you know, sometimes when they complain at this level, what they are saying is that I expect that he listens to me. I expect that she listens to me. Let's dig deep into the word of God, okay? And find out what we can learn from the word of God so that we have expectations that align to the word so that we don't have unrealistic expectations. We don't remain frustrated because unmet expectation lead to frustration. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm going to start off. There are a couple of scriptures that I would like to share with you. I'm, I will be sharing some scriptures. I would also share with you some things as in the path that I have walked, you know, in my marriage and things that I have learned what the Lord has taught me over time. All right. So <laughs> once upon a time in my marriage, I realized that we were not really communicating much. There was a lot of tension, a lot of silence, and a lot of short answers. You know, you could ask a question or, you know, send a long message and you could have a response like, yeah, no, thumbs up, or, you know, whatever. It was very short, straight to the point, you know, kind of matter of fact conversation. Wasn't something that looked like friendship, intimacy, or whatever. At a point, I noticed that all was not well, but I wasn't sure what the issue was. From time to time, I will get into a meltdown where I'll do this whole, you know, have I done something wrong? Is there something? Let's talk about it, da, 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 that kind of thing. It wasn't really working. But I was very frustrated because I knew something was not right, but I didn't know what it was. But some way, down, some way somehow, I eventually found out. <laughs> I was told. And... What I was told was that when I talk, you don't listen. And at the point I said, ah, really? About when you talk, I hear. Oh. Like when you talk, he said, oh, <laughs> maybe you hear, but you don't listen. So there's no point. So the bottom line was that my not listening had led to a shutdown or a breakdown in communication in my house. I didn't fully understand or know what I'd done wrong. I couldn't fully acknowledge it because me at that time, I didn't really get it. But one day in the secret place, the Lord spoke to me. I like to teach you these things so that you know who the real counselor is. The Holy Spirit living on the inside of you is called the wonderful counselor. The wonderful counselor. Never get frustrated. If a counselor's, if a human counselor's phone is switched off, if they ask you, you know, have you booked an appointment or something? So if it seems that they are difficult to reach, please never get frustrated. Each one of us have immediate help. The Bible says God is our ever present help in our time of need. Don't waste time. Don't sit down. I've booked an appointment. It's not coming on. I'm waiting. No, waiting for what? What are you waiting for? We have immediate help. Huh? You know what the name Ezer means? Ezer means helper. It's the same name that the Holy Spirit has and the same name that we have. His own is capital E-Z-E-R. Ours is 
small letter E Z E R. Ezer means helper. Okay. Now that word means, you know, it's like when you cry for help, like help. When you are in danger, when you are in trouble, help me, help. Immediately, Ezer shows up. That's the meaning of the name helper. And that's the assigned role that is given to us as wife. Immediate prompt assistance. That's who the Holy Spirit is to us. He's a strengthener, a comforter. He helps immediately. He's a guide. He's a teacher. He's a friend. And it's all immediate. And so when you begin to understand that, you never wallow in hopelessness or helplessness. If you feel you are in a hopeless situation, you don't know the God who resides on the inside of you. You don't know the God who created you. You don't know the God who helps you. You have to know that. And so one day in the secret place, the Lord begins to speak to me and he asked me, how do you feel when your husband doesn't talk to you? And I said, oh, I, don't, I don't like it at all. How do you feel when he talks to you, but he doesn't talk to you intimately? So the conversation is just something like, you know, send me a screenshot of the ECG bill or you know, where's the report card, you know, some kind of conversation, but it's not a deep one. Like I miss you. I need you. Thank you for your help, your love. It's, it's not like that. And I said, Oh, I don't like it. And then he began to talk to me. He said, he talked to me about how my husband has been saying also that I don't listen to him. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to me that, you know, everything that my husband was feeling was actually or doing, feeling or doing was a reflection of Adeline's personal work with the Lord. So in terms of the conversation that he wasn't really talking to me, that whenever he talks to me, it was just matter of fact conversation. You know, it's not intimate. That was really a reflection of my prayer life. Anytime, and the Lord said, he said, how you are feeling is exactly how I feel because I love you with an everlasting love. I wait for you morning after morning. My mercies are new every morning. But you don't make time for me. You don't come and talk to me. He said, whenever you come and talk to me, it's all matter of fact. Protect me. Bless me. Give me. Give me. It, you know, that's the kind of relationship Adeline seemed to have with her creator. You know, it wasn't intimate. Like, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me that I will be saved. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't take him for granted that your breath is in me. I worship you. You are Adonai. You are sovereign. There is none that compares to you. Who is there like unto you, Lord? And, and, and you know, you, you spend that time with, no, 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 I wasn't doing that. You know, I don't do it. It was just bless me, keep me some, something, then I, off I go. So the Lord said the way, you know, the, the kind of relationship I was having with my husband was reflecting me and God and that he, God, is a jealous God. So what I don't give him, I won't get from anybody. I won't get from any man. I won't get from anybody. So then my eyes began to open and the scales started to fall off. So back to the topic of discussion, lessons in listening. He also made it clear to me that what my husband was saying that I don't listen. Adeline doesn't listen. When I talk, she doesn't listen. She quickly wants to interject. She wants to bring forth her opinion. She wants to be listened to. She wants to raise her voice. She wants to have her way. She wants to shut me down. She doesn't listen. The Lord said, that's exactly how you are with me also. She said, he said, Adeline, you don't listen. Whenever you come to me in prayer, the praying prayer, sometimes you are not even praying, but if, if you do pray, when you come to me in prayer, it's all you. You talk, talk, talk. You don't keep quiet and listen. You don't listen to me talk back to you. You don't listen to me share with you. You, you don't want to even receive my word. You don't even have an appetite to receive from me. It's all about you. Bless us, keep us, Lord, help me. Lord, please lift up this burden. Lord, this, give me. Hey, and the point is that I hadn't even realized that. I hadn't realized it, which means I had a veil on my eyes, right? It's like, me, I've not seen it. I've not noticed it. But when the Lord began to expose it to me, then I realized, hey, it's true. Of course it's true because he's a spirit of truth. He never lies. 
So I realized that, wow, is that how I am? And that was how I was. I did not know how to listen to a God I cannot see. I did not know how to keep quiet and listen to a God I cannot see. I didn't know that. Now, if you don't know that, how, how, how do you expect to live? Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Me, I'm reading the Logos was sparse. Me too, I'm receiving Rima and listening to, I wasn't even hungry for it. What you don't appreciate, how can you attract? Hey, so I realized that, wow, my problems and my issues and my complaints and my excuses in marriage had nothing to do with another human being. It had everything to Adeline's personal, it had everything to do with Adeline's personal work with God. Whoa, whoa, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, I was frustrated, I you know, my husband is not this, he's not doing that, da, 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 da. You know, and every time I want, let's talk about it. Let's sit down. Let's do something. I know there are some of you listening right now. You can identify with what you are saying because that seems to be the situation in your home. Let's talk. Let's do this. Let's do that. Mm -hmm -hmm. And even you're talking, it's not working. You talk and you end up quarreling and the whole place is tense and it's not working. Sweetie, how are you doing in your work with God? How are you doing in your listening, in your listening to God? Have you gotten a word from the Lord lately? Do you even desire it? I used to desire my husband more than I desire the word of God. My appetite was for my husband. And in such a case, it means you have idolized him. And any type of idolatry will not be taken kindly by the Most High God. If you idolize anyone or anything, you do yourself a disservice because it won't be well with you or the relationship or whatever. So beloved in Christ, me, that was the atmosphere that I was facing. And so when the Lord spoke to me, it opened up my eyes and I had to repent. Hardly do people repent. They are looking for solutions, but repentance doesn't seem to be one of them. But without repentance, you can't move forward. The Bible says anyone that conceals his sin does not prosper. Repentance is always the first thing to do. Acknowledge and repent. So the Lord started to open my eyes. He started to bring me to a place where I started to desire to hear him. Now, Psalm 25, I believe it should be Psalm 25, 14, very powerful. The Bible talks about the fact that the, the Lord reveals his secrets to those who fear him. When you walk with reverential fear of God, when you have that respect for God, he tells you the secret of his covenant. Guess what? Marriage is a covenant. He reveals to you the secrets so that you get it. So you don't go wandering around, you know, confused. Wand no, no, no. You get it. You, he reveals to you the secret of his covenant. And then you catch it. Any area of your life, there are secrets in your health, wealth, marriage, whatever, ministry, everywhere, anywhere, parenting, there are secrets from the kingdom. And he reveals it to those who give him reverence. Some of us were living anyhow, prioritizing all other things but him. Do you see it? Seeking help from uh, everywhere but him. Not even acknowledging his authority, you know, his sovereignty. So I started to realize that I had to listen to God. I needed to listen. Sisters in the house, when you listen to the Lord, he will make you wise. The things he tells you will liberate you. And it will not only liberate you, it will liberate all. He will make you a conduit of blessings such that what he tells you, when you also send it forth, you see that it will bear fruit. Suddenly, you have become fruitful in the word of God that he gave to you. Suddenly you see that 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold, your life is becoming fruitful. You realize that there's a transformation. And so these were some of the things that I started to learn. Anybody who doesn't know how to listen to God or anybody who doesn't listen to God will not have much human authority. You won't have it. You will not be listened to. So this whole, he's not listening to me, he's not listening to me. I would suggest that you take your focus of that direction and begin to listen to God. As you listen to God, guess what? God will cause man to listen to you. God will cause human beings to listen to you. 
and I will give you scriptures to prove that. Now, if in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he who is God, Jesus Christ himself, who is God, listen to what the word of God says, Matthew 17, 5. While he was speaking, a cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Even Jesus Christ. Huh? Even Jesus Christ. The Lord spoke that we listen to him. The Lord kind of, it's, it's, like, it's like the Lord gave an instruction to all of us. Listen to my son. It wasn't automatic. It wasn't automatic. Listen to my son. So I think somebody needs to meet. Okay, I'm going to make someone a co-host so you can please help me. Sister Araba, please, if you are free, I'm making you a co-host. And then um, Sister Ama Aite, so that you can help me with muting and unmuting, because sometimes I'm not looking on the screen. Thank you so much. Oh, Psalm 25 verse 14. I believe that should be it. Please check it for me, okay? You can check a few different versions and then you pick the one that aligns with what we are saying. Okay. Psalm 25 verse 14. All right. Thank you. I, I'll proceed from here. So the Lord wants us to listen to him. That's the first and foremost thing. We have a hunger for somebody. I want my boss to listen to me. I want my husband to listen to me. No, no. My child is not listening. Something, something. Everything is connected with your personal work with God. Simple. A person under authority has authority. A person who listens to God shall be listened to. Jesus was fully submitted to his father, always listening to his father. Therefore, the father said to us, listen to my son. In him, I am well pleased. He's pleased with his submission. He's pleased with his work. He worked completely a work of faith, a work of submission, a work of prompt obedience. The Lord said, this is my son whom I love, whom I love. I am well pleased in him. Listen to him. So beloved in Christ, as we listen to scriptures like this, it begins to teach us. I'm going to read to you Mark 9 verse 7. I'm taking it. So this scripture appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It repeats. So I'm taking the amplified version, Mark 9, 7. Then a cloud formed overshadowing them and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him and obey him. Amplified version. Listen and obey. Listen and obey. This, this blessing that is put on, on Jesus is the same thing that God puts on all of us. Jesus is our big brother. If we walk in submission, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. The devil flees. If you walk in submission, husband and wife, submit yourselves one unto the other as unto the Lord. If you walk in submission, you are under authority to God and to human authority, wherever he has positioned you in the marriage under the husband. You realize that the Lord is well pleased with you and the Lord will tell to whom it may concern, listen to my daughter, listen to this one. I'm well pleased with this one. Listen and obey. Tell your children, listen to mama and obey. Listen to this one. All right, I'll take it again. Oh, I think I did him. Yes, in Luke 9 verse 35 amplified version then a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son my chosen one listen and obey and yield to him wow <laughs> it's progressing though we started from matthew 17 5 listen to him mark 9 7 listen and obey him luke 9 35 listen obey and yield oh fantastic beloved in christ everything in this life is connected with an approval of the lord it's like you're working for your boss if the boss approves the check you can cash it if the boss approves your work that's it if you have whatever is approved from above that's it father approves it you shall be grow so you are just talking to right so it's important for us to know that the approval comes from our heavenly father now i'm going to explain to you you see 
um, let me just take it from the part of the temperaments, you know. Have you ever wondered, I've said this before, but let's say it again for the sake of the new ones, new people come on board every time. Have you ever wondered why the gospel was written to us four times? Why the message of Jesus's birth, death, burial, resurrection, and the fact that he's coming back is written to us four times. The gospel is very important. It's important. Everybody must hear the gospel. For God so loved the world mm, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He wants everyone to receive his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and personal savior. He doesn't want any to perish. The Lord wants to reach all and everybody must hear. Everybody must hear and receive it. It's interesting that the Lord caused his, the Holy Spirit caused men to write to us and write the gospel four times. The same message, four times in different ways. The same message. Now, this is so critical because we, we hear differently. We listen differently. And I'm going to read a scripture that affirms that and come back. Mark, Mark 4, 24, it says, consider carefully. No, no, no. Let me read. Let me read Luke 8, 18 before I come to Mark. Luke 8, 18. Consider carefully how you listen. Beloved in Christ, Jesus is speaking. Consider carefully how you listen. Dream Hooper, have an understanding of the way you listen. Don't, don't just, don't, don't miss this. He said, consider it carefully. Eh? Con be intentional about this. He, he said, catch it. Don't let this thing slide. He says, you people don't listen the same way. I know how I created you. You are all uniquely different. Consider carefully how you listen. The husband doesn't listen the same way the wife listens. They are all different. The wife doesn't listen the same way her husband listens. We are uniquely created. We are different. Consider carefully how you listen. Beloved in Christ, cholerics don't listen in the same way as sanguines. Sanguines don't listen in the same way as cholerics. Phlegmatics, melancholy, all the various temperament types and blends, they listen differently. They listen in unique ways. If you don't understand this, you can miss it in your communication with your spouse. You, you just don't get it. Ah, why is it that this morning you're upset? Ah, why did that, that, that? You don't understand. Everyone listens differently. I'm starting from the natural and then we move into the spiritual. Now, in order for us to be born again, in order for us to accept Jesus Christ, in order for us to enter the kingdom, we start off in the natural. So it is the gospel that reaches out to the natural man. The gospel reaches out to the natural man. So what father in his wisdom has done is that he has given us the gospel four times, four times, so that no matter your temperament, no matter your nature, no matter how you listen in your carnality, the carnal man listens differently. Each of us will hear the gospel and come to Christ. Nobody will have an excuse. That's what the whole thing is about. So we take the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew is written by a melancholy and it is aiming at touching the hearts of all melancholies, melancholic blends. The average melancholy is very detailed, very, very detailed. When a melancholy comes to me for counseling, sometimes they will ask me where my certificate is, where I got my training. Some of them want to know how old I am. How many years have I? They want to know details and to know whether you qualify to counsel them. That, that's, that's their posture. They are, they are very particular. So when you read the gospel according to Matthew, Matthew himself was a tax collector. Those people, tax collectors, accountants, and stuff, they are detailed. The Lord knows the kind of giftings he's put in them. So there's a type of work that they are able to do in ministry, in family, everything. They are very detailed. They can take it to another level where they can, they can, you know, make inquiries. Why did you do this? Why? What? On Saturday, Sister Nana, you yeah, shared with us the way she, she's particular. She's detailed. Some things will not just slide. No, very detailed. You know, 
And in all of all of this, you know, there's the good sides and then there's the some way sides. But in all of this, the Holy Spirit comes to you know to help us. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just I'm just building a case. So now the melancholy is so detailed that sometimes they need proof of a matter. They don't just know everything. They just swallow just like that. Moses was melancholic, and in order for the Lord to reach him, Charlie, some of them need signs, signs, wonders, miracles. They need proof. So Moses had his encounter at a burning bush, a bush that is, is burning, but it's not bent, <laughs> you know? And that's where he heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him and he got clarity that this is God. And he went on his assignment. Matthew, the tax collector, is very detailed. So you will see that the Holy Spirit allows him to write the, word, the gospel in a very detailed manner. He shows us who begets who begets who. He will tell you the entire gen genealogy of Jesus. So you, will not, you will not be con confused. He will let you know that this, this person is the Christ. This one begets this, who begets the. He will show you all the details. So the average melancholy has their proof. They say, ah, it's true. This one is the Christ. No more questions. Melancholy shall also be won over into the kingdom because of how they hear. They hear in details. In the relationship, they can say, why did you say this? No, but I don't understand. What does this mean? No, when you were talking, you said this. If you didn't mean it, why did, and the whole thing can sometimes look too long, too long. Sometimes the partner, the spouse doesn't understand. Hey, what is all this? They are detailed people. They are detailed people. By the power of the Holy Spirit, they are able, you know, to be able to handle these things better and relate, you know, better and all that sometimes puts, puts away too much of the strictness and everything. But you have, to, you have to know the person you are married to. You have to know how they are. And Father in his wisdom, so gracious, so loving, no matter your natural temperament, he will meet you at that very point. In your carnal way, your strictness, you want details, you want to know whether Jesus qualifies to be your savior. Okay, let me, let me, let me bring you the gospel written according to Matthew. And you will have all the details you want from the beginning all the way to chapter 28. Hallelujah. Then we go to Mark. Mark is choleric, straight to the point. For me, also, I remember. <laughs> Some parts of me is, I, is a bit like that. Some part of me has part of the choleric nature. And I realized that those times, I don't really have too much time for hello. Sometimes hello, the person will wait for you to say hello. Hi, how are you doing? Sometimes they'll wait for you to respond. And it's, it's slow. It's too slow for me. I don't, I want it straight to the point, you know, Hello, please. How are you doing? Da, da, da. I have a problem on my heart. This is da da da. You can't even send the voice, no send the detail, and then we are done. But this whole hi. Hello. Please, how are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, but uh, yeah, by the grace of God. And you I'm also fine. Yeah. Okay. The, it's too it's it's it Charlie, it drags, it's long, it's, it's tedious, you know, it's too tedious. But so one time I was feeling somewhere and the Lord said, No, no, no. <laughs> it's a hard line. No. So the Lord started to work on me. Whoever begins to feel some way, God will work on you. Started to work on me. Me to have to soften up. Sometimes the irritation is too much. Soften up. Yes, let's let's go through. It's too, you know, you want it your way, your way. Nobody will have it their way. Everybody will have it God's way. And the Lord started to teach me. Seriously, the average choleric minus the power of the Holy Spirit, or whatever, they are straight to the point. They just want everything in a particular way. Sometimes you, they will say, you're wasting my time. Don't waste my time. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> now let's take Mark. Mark is choleric. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he wrote the gospel according to St. Mark. When you read it, it is the shortest gospel, straight to the point, from chapter 1 to chapter 16. He has finished. Jesus is the Christ. He doesn't tell us genealogy of him. He's a no, 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 no. Straight away, he starts by telling us of the voice calling out in the desert. He tells us about John the Baptist. Finished by Mark chapter 1, verse 9. Jesus has been baptized. 
come out of the water straight away by chapter by verse 14 that is it he's preaching the kingdom no, by verse 16 mark chapter 1 verse 16 he has called his first disciples come and follow me by the 21st verse of mark chapter 1 he's driving out an impure spirit he has started teaching you know with authority look he is the christ he didn't go and tell us, born in Bethlehem, he passed here, the, Mary, the mother of Jesus, the into Gabriel came to tell. No, 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 it's too long. Straight to the point, this man is the Christ. By the very first chapter, Jesus is doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Healing people, praying, teaching, he, being baptized, he has done everything. By, just by the first one, straight to the point. A lot of cholerics. They want it to the point. They don't want you to drag the story long. They, no, no, tell me quickly. Just tell me what it is. Let's go on. Just that's it. Just, just matter of fact, tell me. Do you see it? This is it. And it will help you to know how to, how to talk to one another. It will help you. I'll get back to how we listen also because we have to catch it. Matter of fact, straight to the point. All choleris can hear the gospel. You don't have to, if you are the genealogy, did we get this? You find it long, it's long, some, something. Yeah, what is this? Uh, this something. Mark the gospel according to Mark. You can go there. You receive it. You get your understanding. You catch it. You see? All right. Luke, gospel according to Luke. Luke was not an eyewitness. He didn't witness. He wasn't an eyewitness. It's, it's not an eyewitness account. He's telling us what he has been told. Now, even though he's telling us what he has been told, you realize that Luke's account is very, very detailed. So it is his accounts they use for movies about Jesus, you know, movies on the Bible. Luke, the one who was not an eyewitness, it is his account that they use because it's so detailed. Luke is representative of the phlegmatics. They are detailed. They can listen well. Sometimes in the marriage, you are talking, talk, they are quiet, so they are listening. They can really listen well. They get everything, they, the smallest detail, they caught it. And that is what we see when we read the gospel according to Luke, that he's very detailed, very intentional. He, he, he listens, he hears. All phlegmatics are able to receive the gospel. They are able to get the message, even as they read it from Luke, okay? Now, and they don't have any sense of agency or whatever. They'll give you the details. So like that, but he's written everything, very detailed, not in a hurry. Then John, John is representative of all the sanguines. The sanguines are all these hagitachi people, you know, there's no, you know, if you read the gospel according to John, he, he doesn't mention his name in the book. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> the sanguines like to have pet names and all these things. And, you know, there's a way that they behave in relationships. You see it a lot in John's writings. And he talks a lot about love, a lot. A lot of sanguines, sometimes they feel lonely, they feel unloved and all that to evangelize and send them the gospel. The gospel according to St. John is the book that you want to share with them. It is the book that has the, the scripture for God so loved the world. It talks about God's love again and again and again, such that the rejected one can hear the gospel. The rejected one can receive it. The one who feels, oh, no, I don't feel like you can get it, you know. So you see that the Lord cares such that even in that our natural stage that states that we have all these ways of wanting to hear things, he speaks to us that way. Now, let me take it again. The average melancholy likes to hear in details, is able to hear details because you did it. You don't respect me because you did that. It's very easy, can easily, you know, get upset based on some small thing you said, or it's, to them it's not small, it's detailed, you know, means a lot. So details, Jesus is saying, consider carefully how you listen. 
sometimes because of your nature, you are listening and looking into the matter too much according to your nature and it is affecting you. You are being, why did he do this? Why did she do this? Hey, this person doesn't mean well. Ah, this person has a bad spirit. Hey, what is it? It's so intentional. It's not coming from the spirit of God. It's coming from your temperament. Consider carefully how you are listening to that matter or listening to that situation. Now, the average choleric listens a lot and filters what they are hearing through the lens of respect or disrespect. They listen, ah, you disrespected me. Ah, why did you do? look at how you, they look at body language. They, and as soon as their mind thinks that you disrespect them, the, the way they listen and the way they respond has changed based on what they, 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 how they cut it. They filtered everything through the lens of, through the filter of respect or disrespect. I will you talk to me like that? I will, you know, Jesus is saying, consider carefully how you listen. Are you listening according to your temperament or are you listening according to the spirit? Consider it carefully because it changes the whole equation. Some time ago, I used to listen straight away with my temperament. Now, look, phlegmatic. When they listen according to their temperament, they don't have agency. They can simply procrastinate. You know, so it takes them a long time to respond. But if they respond, it takes them a long time to snap out of it. Okay. So which, what I'm saying is this. It takes them a long time to respond as in with offense, with hurt or whatever. But if it gets to that stage, it's a very long time before, if by the grace of God, they snap out of it. They don't just snap out of it. Everything is long. Consider carefully how you are listening. Some of us are listening according to our temperaments in our marriages. We have to listen according to the spirit. Then the sanguines. You can listen easily from the point of view of, of oh, do you love me? You don't love me anymore. When I sent you the text message, you didn't reply. When I called you, you said you call me back. You've not called back. Last time I called you, it was a missed call. Up to now, you've not returned my call. You are listening to through the filter of rejection or acceptance. You are listening according to your nature. And because of your sanguine nature, you easily skew towards the, he doesn't like me, he likes me, he doesn't like me, I feel rejected, I feel unloved, I don't know, I don't feel love. The whole thing is lacking around your feelings of love, not loved, accepted or not. You have to listen to the filter of the word of God and the spirit of God and know that you are loved based on what the word says about you. Not just your temperament. Otherwise, you can cause trouble in the relationship. So these are a few of the things that I want you to catch. We need to consider how we are listening. Some time ago, depending on maybe may, maybe I'm chatting. I'm chatting with my husband. Or I mean, he still does it and all that, but these days I don't have that kind of. <laughs> my listening filter has changed. But those times, maybe we are chatting though. And then before you know it, like he's placed the call. I thought you would say, oh, excuse me, I'm going to make a call or a call is coming through or sweet at one minute. No, no, no. You would just from that con <laughs> from the conversation we're having now, before I know it, the, there's a conversation on the phone and that and it's okay. You know, and I didn't think it was okay. <laughs> and I think I was listening to the lens of my nature. I say, ah, this is disrespectful. But this is it. But what is that? You know, consider carefully how you listen. If you don't consider carefully how you listen. Beloved in Christ is going to cause a great deal of havoc. It's going to cause unnecessary clamor in the marriage. And so this is so critical. Luke 8, 18. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have will be taken from them. If you don't begin to learn the lessons and the secrets in listening, even what you think you have will be taken away. You realize that your conversations, your communication becomes increasingly difficult. And we don't want that. So from today, you need to consider it carefully. Why did you get upset about that matter? 
Huh? Why did you get upset about that matter? Because you filtered it through the lens of your natural man instead of through the lens of the scripture. How dare she talk to me like that? Who does she think she is? What is this? I don't understand. Hey, or something is going on behind it. Is that something I need to know? But why is this girl being so rude to me? Why is the household talking to me this way? Ah, or suddenly daddy is giving her some authority in this. What, what is going on? And then suddenly your mind starts to run haywire. You are listening to a lens of the world system. You are listening to a filter of the world system. Consider it carefully. Otherwise, even what you have will be taken away. Before you know, you know, when he talks about what we have been taken away, before we know it, if we don't take care, we become increasingly dull. I'm going to read another scripture to you. So one talks about how you hear, how you listen. The other talks about what you listen to, what you hear. Mark 4, 24 and 25. Consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. If you decide to continue listening according to your natural man, what you are doing is that automatically your, your spouse, your husband on that side, is also doing it according to the natural man. Somebody needs to step it up into spiritual things. There is a law of spirit and life. There is a law of spirit and life. Step it up into that realm where you move things from the carnal man, the temperament, the natural man, and you take it higher. Take it a notch higher. Take it a step higher. Begin to listen to the divine. Begin to listen to the king of kings. Begin to listen to the spirit of God. Take it a notch higher. Take it a notch higher. Now, when you take it a notch higher, the Lord is going to give you more. It's going to give you more revelation. It's going to take you deeper. Suddenly, you realize that peace has entered into your home. You realize that a hey, unity has come. Understanding is, hey, wow, you realize that things are changing and it's the Lord doing it. I'm taking it again in the amplified version, Mark 4, 24 to 25. Then he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. Pay attention. Don't go hear stuff on social media, worldly systems and stuff. It will affect you. You can't play with what you hear. Whether you like it or not, what you hear impacts you. Simple. Pay attention to what you hear. Content. He's now talking about content. Some of you are discussing things with unbelievers. They are giving you counsel. Pay attention because what you hear shall affect you. What you are hearing, is it godly? Is it truth or is it a lie? A lie puts us into bondage, but truth sets us free. He said, by your own standard of measurement, that is to the extent that you study spiritual truth and apply godly wisdom, it will be measured to you and you will be given even greater ability to respond. Do you see here, some time ago, depending on what we hear, hear we react. As soon as you hear that, ah, why did you say that? Why did you talk to me like that? Then you react. You are so fragile. The Bible says when you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is weak. And those times, based on what we heard, we just, we just zoom off into a certain nature. I mean, we, we just respond. But now he's saying, pay attention to what you hear. And then he's talking about the extent to which you study spiritual truth, like what we are doing here now. And you apply godly wisdom. He says you will be given greater ability to respond. Do you understand? He's saying that now you will get a tenacity of spirit. You will get a strengthening in your inner man. You will no longer be triggered off by simplistic things. You will no longer be triggered by the mundane. Oh, he said he didn't love me. He said he didn't love me. That's why I slapped him. Oh, how? Oh, how? What? Has, no. You are so self-controlled because the spirit of the Lord is the one that is leading you and guiding you. So irrespective of what somebody said, you don't lose it. You don't flip. You don't move into physical abuse and emotional tantrums. No, 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 no. You are restrained by the spirit. You have been given a divine ability to respond. And suddenly those around you begin to see a change. Ah, we, I talked to this one anyhow, but she didn't. She didn't react. Hey, she didn't throw tant. Hey, why? What is happening? Suddenly, it is clear that no, this man is walking under the authority of the divine. 
this one is no longer, she's no longer operating in, in according to her nature, her term. No, 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 no. She has taken it a notch higher. So I continue reading. He says, for whoever has a teachable heart, we need to have a teachable spirit. We need to want to grow. We need to desire to mature. Because when we look at how it has been until now, it's not been good. He says, for whoever has a teachable heart, to him, more understanding will be given. You know, sometime ago, say, I don't understand. I just don't understand what is going on. Ah, why can't we just communicate? What is, I don't understand. Uh, you know something, understanding will be given to you by the spirit. Understanding will be given to you by the spirit. Even as you yield, you avail yourself to catch spiritual truth, to study it. He says to him, more understanding will be given. And whoever does not have, does not have a yearning for truth. Even what he has will be taken away from him. This is, some of us have excuses. Some of us. What we have is an explanation of, eh, I did this because he did that. Eh, that's why I did it. Now, every day. Why you did it is what you want to explain. Sweetheart, when are you going to take it and not higher? We are tired of the why you did it. Is it are you not tired? Yeah, that's, me, that's how I am. That's, because of what he said, because of this. Because, consider carefully how you listen. Why are you letting the content of what you heard, you know, draw you into that kind of situation? That, that clamor, that, that response, you know, that, that is uncontrolled and, and it's very unchristlike. And then you give explanations and you give excuses and you are still where you are. That's why Jesus said to the person who had been sitting by the pool for 38 years. So do you want to be well? Huh? Do you want to be well? Are, are we still there? The way we were doing things last year, is that the same way? And you are still giving excuses. He says, if you don't have a yearning for the truth, because the excuse is a lie. Yeah, that's I me. Mean, that's I do it like that because... Uh, that's how I am. Who said that's how you are? How you really are is that you are created in the image of God. You have to begin to accept and comprehend that truth. The image of God, the image of God, think about it. The image of God, the likeness of God, the likeness of God, the likeness of God. Is he insulting? Is he vulgar? Uncontrolled? Clamorous? Jealous? Suspicious? timid, slow, well, I mean, think about it. And so as you begin to renew your mind, as you begin to incline your ear to the, to, the, to, to the word of God, as you begin to listen to the word of God, the counsel of God, you see that you are being transformed. And it is God who will tell man to listen to you. Some time ago, we used to want to be listened to. It didn't work. We want to control the situation, control the conversation. It didn't work. We want to insist on what we are saying. Explanations. At a point, we even got tired. You will explain, ah, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Every time we come back to the same discourse. Now, I came here to tell you, the ability to be listened to, even that is given by the, the Lord. Just listening, something as simple as being listened to. It is an ability that God gives. That's it. He gives it. To be respected is given by God. To be loved, given by God. To be accepted, given by God. To be planted in a family, in a home, done by God. Everything is he doing it. We, we are yielded. Beloved in Christ, he says that if we don't have a yearning for truth, if your ear does not want to listen to the truth, even what you have will be taken away. It means we begin to become more dull and more dull. We begin to become increasingly slow in the, in the things of God and alert in worldly wisdom. The becauses are too much. The excuses must cease. We need to align ourselves to the truth. Let the truth and the truth alone fill you. Let the truth and the truth alone flood you. Let the truth and the truth alone be that which you listen to. Let the truth and the truth alone be that which you hunger for. Assuming somebody screams at you and calls you some careless word, insulting word, what does the truth say about you? What does Jesus say about you? Does he not call you loved? Does he not call you accepted? Does he not call you beloved? 
so what should you so so why are you why are you in a in a, in a well of sorrow based on a word that is not truth why are you letting it sink in why are you believing a lie you need to consider carefully how you listen the bible says if anyone has ears to hear let him hear and heed my words let him hear what the spirit of the lord is saying it's high time that believers in the house we began to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Sweetheart, when was the last time that you got a word from the Lord? This morning, yesterday, last week, last month, last year. When was the last time? When was the last time? In what direction is your appetite? Do you have this appetite that says, we need to hear from you? We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, dear Lord, what will we do? We want you more and more each day. We want to hear from you. Teach us your perfect way. Show us the way. Is that your appetite? Or your appetite is, I need to sit my husband down and tell him my feelings. I need him to listen to me. I need to, sweetheart, let me tell you something. Those methods don't work. Hmm? Hmm? Don't waste your time too much. Some of us, we have already worked it. So we are teaching you so that you can be liberated. Don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Do it the God way. Spend time in the secret place. Listen to the Lord. Let the Lord teach you. Let the Lord counsel you. Let the Lord help you. Let him heal you. Let him take you away from your natural nature to a spirit-controlled nature. Every spirit-controlled temperament listens to the Holy Spirit. Spirit controlled choleric, spirit controlled melancholic, spirit controlled sanguine, spirit controlled phlegmatic. They all listen to the Holy Spirit. They all align to the Spirit of God. You see the Spirit of God transforming them. You see one who used to be shy now walking in the boldness of the Spirit of God. You need what you see one who was brash and just able to say it as it is, now being controlled in the area of their words being selective, being gentle in speech, being gentle in heart and in nature. You see one who used to be timid, being bold, being bold, walking in boldness and walking in love, no longer walking in fear. You'd see one who used to pay attention to details, now still pays attention into details but in the right way not to condemn another but to properly do the work of the lord doing everything as unto the lord giving thanks to god you see one who used to be very complaining always complaining now that person has an attitude of gratitude always giving thanks in every situation the spirit controlled temperament listens to the holy spirit beloved in christ the lord is speaking to us today he's talking to you He's talking to me. He wants us to listen to him. When we listen to him, he causes men to listen to us. When I say men, I mean people. Now, I'm going to read two scriptures to you. Listen to it very carefully. Okay? It's, it ministered to me. It, it's a scripture. It, these scriptures, they, they, they speak to me. Let it speak to you. Okay? Genesis 3, 17 to 19. So this is back in the first marriage, okay? The first sinless marriage. They go ahead and disobey the Lord and suddenly sin enters into their union and into the world, into their heart, into their union and into the world, a path that each of us walks. And then God comes in there and begins to speak to each of them. He first, he calls the man, Adam, Adam, where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid and so I went to hide. The voice that you should desire, the voice that should draw you to me, the voice that you say you are afraid. Hey. And then the Lord began to speak to each of them. And there were repercussions for disobedience. I want you to listen to the repercussion for the disobedience of the first husband. I want you to catch it. Please listen along with me. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife. Hey, the punishment is coming. This is the first line. Because I'm about to punish you, but I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm punishing you because you listened to your wife 
and you ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you. You mustn't eat from it. Because of that, cursed is the ground because of you. Because of that, hmm? cursed is the ground because of you. That decision you took to listen to your wife over and above me, God. Cursed is the ground because of you. Financial hardship. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. So you struggle. It will produce tons and tissues for you. Nothing, you won't see anything. You will invest, you will toil, you will suffer. Nothing will come out of it. You will eat the plant of the food. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you, thank you, sister. Okay, let's continue. He says, it will produce tons and tissues for you. It means that nothing is coming out of you. You can't see the profit in the business. We can't see what, you can't see fruit in all the effort. You will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow. Sweating means you will start to struggle. You will, you, you will stress, sweating means you are stressing, no longer resting. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. Now, when I saw this first line, I said, what? I said, what? He's being punished because he listened to his wife? What? And so as I, uh, when you read the word, ponder over it. So I'm pondering over it. I'm pondering over it. I'm asking myself questions. Because at that time, we were in a difficult place. So, so the whole, you know, case is the ground. You are sweating. Nothing is working. That, that whole thing. And, and we were in that difficult place. And I was trying to find answers. And I, I, come, I come across this scripture. And this scripture is telling the man that because he listened to his wife. Hey! So I started to reflect upon the whole thing and try, relate it to my marriage. And I asked myself, what have I offered my husband? What has he listened to? That probably, that, that contradicted the word of God. Then I remembered, he said, Adeline, submit to your own husband in everything. I remember he told me that I should respect my husband. And I remember that there were some times I was angry, I was upset, and I was talking, and the, the things I was doing was not respect, right? And, 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 and my husband listened. Huh? <laughs> when you disrespect, they will listen. When you talk, when you are rude, they listen. Now, now the Lord had told him that husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. But he listened to the bad behavior, the attitude, the words, the blasting, whatever you are doing, you and I, whatever we did, they listened. And for listening to that, and when they listened to that, they responded in a no love response. Because when you listen to it, you can't, it's difficult to love it. Now, God is saying, because you listened to her and you did what I said, you know, you shouldn't do. I said, love her. But you said, I, I can't love her because you have listened to her rudeness, her whatever, whatever. You listened. Therefore, and then now the repercussions begin. So when I saw it, I said, what? Then I asked for forgiveness. And then I said, Lord, from today, whatever I do, whatever I do, may it be in alignment to your will for my life. I'm going to give you an example. Some time ago, sometimes I'll come home and say, oh, I saw so and so on the street. I saw this guy, he was selling chewing gum on the street. I thought the sun was too high. So, so I, I called him aside and I, you know, I said he should prepare his CV. I'll help him up the tree. Long and short of it was that he helped the guy off the street. I said, oh, wow, eh, sir, oh, okay. Then another time, another total show, oh, so and so said he needed help. Oh, where do you know him from? I don't really know him, but anyway, he said he needed help. So, I mean, I thought, why don't we help him? Charlie, you don't know what will happen in the future. Let's help him. Hey, uh, uh, okay. Then another time, another one said, this one is, oh, so, uh, he too, he said he needed, I said, hey, you don't, but you don't know him. Then later I realized some of those who had been helped, some of them, you don't hear from them again. Some of them, they promised whatever, oh, I'll do this and I'll do, and then they are gone and all that. Then a part of my carnality started to rise. Hey, eh, are you sure? But you've helped a lot of them. Some of them, we don't even know where they are. Are you not throwing money away? Are you not? Sweetheart, me and you were called to be helpers, so not barriers. 
any good thing that this husband of yours is doing, you must encourage him. You give money to your mother too much. Every day you are doing it. You say, what about me? What sweetheart. Eh? You must encourage him to do the right thing. Here I was attempting to become a barrier. And then one day he said to me, I said, ah, but these people, so hey, are you sure? Some of them, they don't even hear from them again. He said, he said Jesus helped 10 lepers. Only one came back to say thank you. So sometimes it's only 10% of the effort you put in that will be realized, but do it anyway. That's what he told me. I said, hey. so when I started reading these scriptures, then I realized the Lord started to speak to me. Do you know this man's assignment? Do you know what I've called him to do? For some of you, your husbands are kingdom financiers. They are men who are going to love you and love humanity. They are people who are, you see, and they are doing it, but sometimes the jealousy comes up, the competition, the whole, why are you doing this for your man? Why that? I want you to do for me, me, me. No, no, they're listening. There are lessons in how we listen. Beloved in Christ, hear the Lord and hear him well. Hear the Lord, allow the Lord to speak once and listen and listen well and align yourself. When I read this whole because you listen to your wife and I saw the punishment that followed, economic hardship, difficulty, stress, tiredness, a lot of human effort, 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 yielding next to nothing. I said, what? Then I saw another scripture, Genesis 21, 12. But God said to him, he's talking to Abraham, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you. He says, listen to your wife because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Hey, so this scripture said, listen to your wife. What is the difference between this scripture saying, listen to everything your wife says and the other scripture that says, because you listen to her, and did the thing that I said, don't do. Then I saw the difference. Any wife who walks in alignment to God shall be listened to. And it is God who will give that listening ability. God will tell your husband, listen to her, and he will listen. God is the same one who told Joseph, don't be afraid to marry Mary. What is conceived of her is the Holy Spirit. God is the one who talks to your husband to hear you out. God is the one who talks to your husband and says, this woman is a virtuous woman. No, listen to her. Don't be afraid. This woman, what is in her is of the Holy Spirit. This woman has yielded to me. This one has allowed me to work on her in the secret place. This one has inclined her ears to my word. This one has started to listen to me. This one has become faithful to me in the secret place. This one has opened up her heart and her spirit to me. This one has become devoted to me. Listen to this one and listen to that one and listen to that one. For all who are aligning to me, Listen to them. Beloved in Christ, it is the Lord who causes us to be listened to. This is the word of God that is coming to us today. The Lord is speaking to you and to me. And I pray that some way, somehow, your heart has received the word. I pray that some way, somehow, something that has been spoken this evening ministered to you sisters i want to end here because you know it's, it's, it's from 8 30 to 9 50 oh my goodness i'm sorry about that please feel free put up your hands share share with us let's encourage one another in fact i think i should share this before we go ahead last week was it last week i believe it was last week at the marriage school that you know, I was talking, I don't even know the, con the details of what I was saying because it, it's been a week now, but let me just share it. Then I heard the Lord say, mention their names. Eh? The example you are giving, mention names. And I said, hey, now whose name should I mention? Because I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm sharing. But the point is this, whenever you are speaking, whatever you are saying, when it is the counsel of God, when is God? It's not you speaking. You're not speaking with your intellect. He is speaking from your belly. So he is able to give you a chance before you can think it. You've spoken it and it's from him, right? So I heard that within me, asking, 
mention names with this particular example. So then I, uh, before I knew it, I mentioned the name. So I think I mentioned Adobia and I mentioned maybe Ajua, I just mentioned. Then our sister Adobia put up her hand and she unmuted and she shared that this was the exact situation in her home. This was a season she was going through, you know, and, and she shared. So she testified that her name being mentioned alongside what was being shared is true. It's in alignment. Now, her testimony encouraged me because I also know what happened when I was talking. I had a prompting, mention a name with this example. I said, Hundred and something, something women on the which which name should I don't know it is because intellectually you don't know. None of us have any intellectual knowing about anything, but from the spirit, he knows and he is speaking. And before I knew it, I've mentioned that Dubia. I thank God that she put up her hand and she shared instantly. I thank God because as she shared, it was a confirmation to me. The Lord is able to confirm his word with signs and wonders so that as you are listening, you are being blessed and you are also acknowledging that what is coming out is not from the human being speaking. We are only vessels. It is all by the, by the Lord. So that really touched me, that encouraged me. Sisters, the Lord will give you counsel. The Lord will cause you to know the word in season to speak. That will be an, an encouragement to your husband. Your husband will begin to listen and he will listen to your word and it's the counsel of God. He will listen to your body language. Listening is not only done by the ear. He will listen. You can listen with your eyes. He will listen to your body language and it's a body language of respect. Of You see, he sees reverence. He sees godliness. He's able to see humility. He sees your submission. It is an attraction because all of that is Jesus Christ. Come to me and learn from me, for I am lowly and humble in heart. And he sees that lowliness. He sees that humility. He sees Jesus in you. Before you know it, the power in you, the power of Jesus Christ in you is drawing your husband also, is drawing your children also. And then you realize that you have been listened to God. It has caused fruitfulness in your house. You get it. Sisters, I want to see hands up. You, you know how we do it. We don't like any uncomfortable silence. You, you know how we do it. <laughs> so please put your hands up and share. You can contribute. You can, you know, give, give an example, you know, whatever will encourage us. Just feel free. Something the Lord has taught you. Something you feel that we need to know. Listening to God. And how it translates in our home, being listened to, learning to listen. Whenever a couple sit down to have a conversation, the couple, oh, Sister Nanaraba, please share. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Pastor Adeline, thank you very much. Um, uh, my testimony is about last week. Okay. And um, last week, uh, that Tuesday morning, something happened and I was so distressed. I was so down. I was crying. I was upset. And, um, okay, fast forward to the, before that, I had a call, I think, um, on my birthday, that was May 15th, from an old friend. I had not speak, spoken to him in a while, but he's a, a pastor. And he called that morning and told me that he had had two dreams earlier in the year and last year that I was dead. And that um, day, so he had the same dream. My birthday, dawn, he had the same dream. And he thought, he, though he's been praying about it, he thought I should know. I said, okay. Now, a week after my birthday, I got another call from a, another friend. And he had told me the same dream. He had that dream on my birthday, but he didn't want to spoil my mood. So uh, he did not tell me. He was not telling. I just broke down in tears because that morning I was so down and I was upset with something that my husband had done. And I didn't, I was thinking through struggling whether to go ask him questions, confront him or uh, something like that. So when the call came, I just broke down. I cried. I was 
not panicking, but I was upset. I was asking God questions. So I even sent a sister a message that I wanted to talk to her because I needed counsel. Uh, some way, somehow, when I finished working and I came to lie down, I, I, I slept. I didn't hear the phone ring and all that. When I woke up, I had Ms. Auntie Fis call and when I called back, she was busy. So it was a Tuesday. So I usually go for meeting, full gospel uh, business men's fellowship meeting on Tuesday. So I went for the meeting when I woke up and I told Auntie Fis we should reschedule our call. Now, some way, somehow, in the morning when I was crying, I heard a voice telling me that the dreams that I had were warnings for me that I should be careful with my emotions. Otherwise, I would leave my kids. I would die early. Because all the dreams were telling me I, 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 they had lost me and it was bad. Everybody was shocked. And through the crying, I heard that voice. So when I came that day to join uh, uh, the marriage school, I was a little elite because we didn't close it. Then I joined in and the topic was about handling emotions. And I said, like, everything that you spoke that day was like directly God talking to me. Some ways when I slept and I woke up, I was okay before I went for the meeting. But when I came back, what we discussed, uh, was taught on my school that day was directly my word directly speaking to me, handling my emotions, being careful about my emotions. And it has really taught me a lot of things. Since then, I don't allow um, things to get to me. I don't allow things to bother me like before. And I'm just testifying to encourage someone, listening to the Holy Spirit. And I'm glad that it's been, that point has been made again today. And listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It saves us. It's important because sometimes it might not make sense. Sometimes the human side wants to show that, oh, but I need to know what, what is going on. I need to, I need to, I need to. But if the Holy Spirit says, keep quiet, ignore, let it go. We need to listen because he knows better than the, the solution we think we, we can bring up or the solution we think we have. So this is my testimony and I share to encourage uh, uh, someone out there by uh, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit is really important and it really helps us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing this. I, I thank God so much for your testimony. Very, very encouraging indeed. God is good. Um, Sister Irama, uh, you will speak shortly. Thank you so much, Sister Nanaraba. God bless you. So sisters in the house, what Sister Nanaraba shared, okay, is sometimes you can have somebody who says, hey, I, I dreamt about you. I saw the name I saw, I've also had some. Sometimes the, the thing that the person says they dreamt about is, is some bad news or, you know, the whole thing sounds like a horrific thing. Sisters, do you know something? It's not the be all and the end all. So for example, in Sister Nanaraba's case, the person said, hey, I saw this, you were dead. God forbid. So Psalm 118 verse 17 becomes a scripture you can meditate on, plant it in your spirit, believe it, eat it, chew it, think it, walk it, live it, love it, become it. I will not die, but I will live and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. I shall not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Father, this is your word. It doesn't return void. Lord, I know that it is appointed unto me once to die there and after that judgment. It is an appointed time. When the time is up, I will know because I'm, on, I'm an ambassador for you. I'm on assignment for you. I cannot go before my time. Lord, I thank you for your word. Do, do you see where we are going with this? So the scripture becomes what you incline your hearing to. Now, the emotions in itself, the crying, the, yeah, gosh, what will I do? Oh, no, yeah, they saw me dead. They saw me dead. That thing itself can actually take one out. You see it? The, the sorrow, the, the shock, the, the, the fear, the whole oh God, the imagination. No, you don't want to imagine that, those things. No, no, it's not your portion. So you walk well, you live well, you, you, you hold on to the word of truth, you live it, you live in joy, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice, you see, and that becomes your life. 
not the other life. Look, the anger can take anybody out. If a blood vessel bursts, we are done. By the time someone is angry, screaming, shouting, if a blood vessel bursts, that's all. That's all. It's over. The person will lie down. It's finished. They, they carry out, they, uh, to carry us away. So th this is how we do it. Sometimes a word will come to you. The Bible says every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Do, do you understand? He said a tongue rises against you in judgment. They, they've given a judgment of uh, your life that it will be. They, they, then you yeah. condemn it by saying, God forbid. This is not my portion. Do you see it? Uh huh. Now the prophets in the house. Sometimes you can see a scenario. We've seen some. Sometimes you see it. You see somebody didn't make it. Somebody's not well. Somebody passed. You. That's the picture you see. This is how you present it. You present it as a no. God forbid. And so you stand in the gap. Let me give an example. So one time, one man of God was preaching. Uh, prophet sharing. Then he said, No, it cannot be. Then he said, Please. Let's all rise up, begin to pray in the language of the spirit. It cannot be. Pray in the language of the spirit. It will not be. No, it cannot happen. Hey, we didn't know what he had seen. He alone, he alone, he alone knew what he had seen. But this is not what. So we we're praying. He said, pray in the language of the spirit. We obeyed. We were praying. So we prayed, prayed. And he said, thank you, Lord. He said, it has been averted. It will not happen. Then he started to tell us what he saw. He told us, he mentioned the woman's name. He said, I see the woman crying uncontrollably. She, he said, she was inconsolable. He mentioned her name. Then he mentioned the name of her daughter, firstborn. They had only one child at the time. So once he mentioned the name, he could initially, was, he was, even spelt it. He was trying to pronounce it. As soon as he mentioned the name, so the daughter and the mother, suddenly we had an idea of who it was. Then he said, it's a very, uh, this person is very dear to this church and that the enemy was planning a massive shock to this church. And there was going to be a barrier. There would have been a barrier. So we saw, we saw everything. The, the person wasn't even there. He was an, on assignment for the king. He had gone to seek first the kingdom of God. And this word has come behind him and it had become an intercessory thing. Because you see, Sodom was going to be destroyed. Lot and his wife were going to be destroyed. But what did Abraham do when the Lord told him? He didn't place a phone call to the Lord. You will die. You, you will die. God is going. No. Straight between him and the throne of grace, he interceded for his brother, for his nephew. That's how we do it. That's what this prophet also did. We all, the whole, all of us, we stood in the, we prayed for this man of God and his family. And meanwhile, he wasn't there. He has gone on assignment and it was averted. So later he met me during the week and he said, hey, do you know what happened? What I was told what happened at the meeting. I said, oh, yes, I was present. Then he said, do you know that I had seen it too? I said, wow, you saw it too? He said, yes. He said, but my wife did not see it. My wife didn't see it. I saw it. So my wife was busy preparing one year old birthday party. But the Lord had told me that we cannot have a party. We must have a fast. So he told his wife, we can't do that. But, so, but she's one year, that's the norm. So, you see the traditions, <laughs> that the standard, you know, well system, party, party. No, no, the Lord showed the husband, you must fast for your child. There is an attack. And then the Lord showed the prophet and look at the wisdom by which the prophet did it. And we prayed and he spoke and said, it has been averted. It will not happen. It did not happen. So I want to encourage all of you, even with your prophetic gift, you can see a picture. You can decree it as in, no, maybe Sodom will be destroyed, but Lord, 40 righteous people, 50, 40, please have all the way to 10. Intercession can go on based on what you have seen. Intercession can go on based on what you saw. Do you see? Instead of just picking the phone call and telling the person, I saw you are no more. Sometimes you can, you have spoken a word of discouragement into her spirit. She's feeling sad. What you said, how did it encourage her? The Bible says, whatever you say, that make sure it encourages your hearers. You see, even you called, said, let me pray with you. That one is even better. Do you see it? So I just want to encourage you. We've learned on all the angles, whether you are operating the prophetic gift, you know, or whether you are the recipient of the word know how to handle it. Thank you so much for sharing that because you've taught us well.